Just, just make it around the wall. Just around. Just make it. Just. Just. Oh boy. What's up, guys? My name is Khan, and we're back today in Logic Bots, and uh, I'm pretty excited to get back into Logic Bots. I really do love this game, and I think we're finally going to finish up this third section of the career here. Well, actually, there's four courses, but we're going to finish up GPS Navigation number two. So we did do GPS Navigation number one. Uh, number two, very similar to GPS Navigation number one. So all we have to do is build a Logic Bot. That will navigate all the GPS waypoints and finish at waypoint 6. Complete the level in 2 minutes 35. I don't care about the time. We, we're probably not going to get the time on this one. Generally speaking, the GPS ones are pretty difficult. Uh, complete the level with robot cost, but maybe, without using any ultrasonic rangers. So we'll try and go for that objective and see if we can get rid of that one. Okay, so we got to start here with our robot and then move towards point 1 over there. And then point 2 over there. And where's point three? Where's point three? Oh, point three's up in the trees? Are you serious? Four is down there, and then five is across the ditch. So again, it's it probably going to need to be something that goes a lot around rocks. And six is over there. Okay. Interesting. For the main body, we're going to use twin motor framework. Because obviously that's the, the beefier, beefier setup. Uh, we'll just put the little wheels for now. We might end up upgrading this to the bigger wheels. Probably going to end up upgrading this to the bigger wheels, but we'll start with the little wheels for now. Right motor. And right motor. Okay, and then the mandatory stuff, uh, we have to have a GPS receiver. And I think it's automatically in the forward orientation, right? Zero degrees? Yeah, okay. Zero degrees is forward. There's two number of monitors. I know that on the GPS. The GPS outputs uh, the angle to the next position and it outputs the distance to the next position. So we're going to do that and uh, and put two. There's also, I think, I think there's a third one because I'm pretty sure there's one for... So we've got distance. We've got angle and we've got waypoint number i believe but the waypoint number is the input we feed it okay so let's go into the circuit board here and uh, let's get some stuff set up at least to do the gps portion and then we'll deal with the object dodging portion after that so let's get the gps set up so basically what we've got here is we've got our gps receiver unit on the circuit board we've got the inputs hooked into the three number monitors so for distance angle and waypoint and then of course we've got a dual switch just to have the vehicle always on and moving forward. Then I think all we need to do is use a counter to determine the waypoint. We feed it the waypoint from the counter. So we'll start at zero and we need to send an initial blip, a start pulse. Here we go, let's send a start pulse. So the start pulse is going to reset it to zero and add one. I believe. Does that work? Yes, okay. It changes it to waypoint 1 right away. And then if we start it again, it's still waypoint 1. Okay, perfect. So we also actually need to have a, an OR gate there on the adder because it can't just be the start pulse that does it. Uh, it's also got to be the when you, your distance gets to zero. So we can do that condition right away. So if the distance is less than a static value... So if our distance becomes less than you know what let's let's uh let's clean these circuits up here let's do this nice and organized there we go so if our distance becomes less than our static value of where's our static value static value and uh let's do this at like 0.5 meters i think i'm pretty sure that everything's in meters in this so if our distance becomes less than our 0.5 meters like this then we can also send the signal to increment to the next gps coordinate so basically what that's going to do is it's going to say okay your distance to your gps coordinate has almost gotten to nothing, which means you're on the GPS coordinate, which means we can change the counter, which will in turn change the waypoint number, which it sends back to the GPS. So that's a really simple uh, circuit there to automatically start at the first waypoint. And after we get to that first waypoint, it will automatically go to the next one. So if we if we start here, you can see our distance is going to get smaller. We're not going to make it to that waypoint, though, because we don't have any, any steering yet. So we got to do the steering portion next. Now, the steering portion all comes off the angle and we have to we have to split that angle position because there's actually 
um, you know, there's two, there's two angle conditions that we're gonna have to check. So actually, we're gonna we're gonna move this, move this out a little bit over here, and we'll, we'll grab this and move it over to there like that. So, okay, so if our angle has two conditions, so less than and greater than are our two conditions, like this. And again, we're gonna need two static values. So let's just wire this one up to the top and let's wire this one up to the bottom. Okay, so if our angle is less than, let's say negative two degrees, then we're gonna want to reverse our right motor because it means we've gone too far to the left because I believe negative is, to, is the counterclockwise and and positive angles are the clockwise ones. And then same sense, we can go two degrees. So if we're greater than two degrees, then we gotta reverse our motor to the right, which means we gotta reverse the left motor direction because then it'll flip the left side and it'll turn. I, th I think this is correct. I mean, if it's not, we can just rewire this, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. It's totally not correct. See, I told you, but this is okay. We can just, we can just change this. Okay, so let's just, yeah, no, let's delete that. Grab this. So this will reverse the left motor and this will reverse the right motor. Okay. There we go. Perfect. See, now it aims itself right at that. Okay. That's good. It hasn't fluctuated yet. We're still we're still doing good. I mean, you know, we could drop the decimals. We'd have to put a clamp in there. Okay, so let's go to one. So this has no sort of avoidance of collisions. So see there, we, we made it within one. Then it rotates to the next direction. And now it's gonna go to two. This thing, oh boy. Can't even make it up the hill. Okay. But it has no collision to avoidance right now. So you can see it's just constantly turning towards that objective. It works really well. Making a GPS circuit is a lot easier than you think. Um, because all we're really doing is checking are we lined up and how far are we away. See now it's gonna, here's the problem. It's gonna go straight into this rock. This is where we need the collision avoidance, you see. I think what we do here is we just put a second set of conditions on these two motors and we just make it a collision section. So let's just do a prox. Ugh, I do not like this sensor at all. The sensor is not. Okay. Let's do a box section here. Okay, perfect. So we're going to name this one the left and the right. So quite simply, all we need to do is put in some OR conditions. Uh, so we'll put an OR gate here and then connect this up to the left motor direction as well. And we'll do another OR gate right below it. And again, same thing. So our GPS circuit here on the one side, will still do the same thing, no problem. But then we've also got the right and the left sensor. And if the left sensor triggers, we have to reverse the uh, right motor direction because that means we're gonna run into something. And if the right triggers, we reverse the left motor direction. So hopefully this will avoid objects to an extent. Maybe. At least the rocks. We might run into other issues with other things, but this is also really stupid too. It's not It's not prioritizing which direction to go in. It's just going to go, I'm going to pick whatever direction I don't see. Hopefully it doesn't see this ridge. And it sees the ridge. But we got to move our sensors up. Our robot is looking better and better every day. All right. Gonna make it through here, good. We made it down the dip. Good, good. Go up without going backwards. No, it's good. It slides on this hill, but at least it, you know, it still steers into it, which is good. It steers towards the objective. Okay, I'm worried about this rock, but I'm hoping. The problem, of course, is it's gonna fight itself. So I, it might not work because the GPS is going to tell it to steer into the direction and the, these things are going to tell it to steer away. Yeah. Which is what I thought was going to happen. So it's going to fight itself. So we need to actually override the GPS. So I decided to add a circuit extension because we're not really worried about money on this build. I think we're already above the cost anyways. I think it was like 1200 or something. Or actually we can check that right now. What was it? 1200, yeah. So there's there's no way we're getting the cost anyway. So I decided to add a circuit board extension uh, and I figured out how to fix the problem. So initially we just had it so that if either the right or left sensors were activated, 
then you couldn't use the normal GPS navigation circuit, which is all this mumble jumble stuff over here. So instead, what I've changed now is made it so if the right or left sensors are activated, both signals are split. Uh, half the signal on either of them goes to this OR gate, which in turn resets this timer. And this timer starts with five seconds from this initial time. So what happens now is when one of the sensors triggers detecting an object, uh, the, the entire system will stop using GPS mode for five seconds. And then after the five seconds is up, it will go back to using GPS mode. So hopefully in that five seconds, it gives us time for the normal left and right dodging circuits where the right and left circuits, the other half of them you can see are still feeding up into these OR gates just to control the motors directly. So we should be able to uh, avoid GPS mode. And the timer coincidentally is, is kind of an interesting block. It outputs a high signal, a logical signal on when the timer is set to zero. So as soon as this timer turns on, it outputs a, a off signal, which means it can't complete these two AND gates, which means the GPS doesn't actually do anything. And then as soon as the timer turns, gets to zero, these AND gates are fulfilled and they start controlling the motors again, regardless of these sensors. So let's see if we can make it there around that rock this time and uh, through those trees. I think this will do that no problem. I'm a little bit worried about this ditch, but um, we'll see what happens when we get there. But I do have an idea on how to fix it if it gets stuck in the ditch. So let's uh, let's do this here. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no. Well, we never had issues with one anyways. Going up the hill now. You know, it, it seems to slide, but you can see the GPS still corrects for it. Okay, so now we're coming to the first major obstacle. Alright, so it's got two. It's going to go right into the rock. The sensor picks up the rock. Now you can see there, it's basically off GPS mode now. It's just driving out into the open because it dodged the rock. Now it turns back on GPS mode, and boom, we're heading towards the next destination. So that should work. Um, it should be able to dodge stuff no problem, and as long as it doesn't, uh, as long as it doesn't screw up here. Now the hard part is going to be this ditch because I'm 99% I'm sure this waypoint here fires us straight at the ditch towards that waypoint, and I don't, I don't think we're going to make it over the ditch, but we'll, we'll see. All right, this is good. Three. So now it's going to turn. It's probably going to see that tree. Yep, but it's going to dodge that tree. Oh, perfect. Just sneaked around that tree. Yeah, so, uh, this might become the problem, but I have an idea. I have an idea. And, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna go straight into the ditch. I mean, I don't think there's no way it's going over that. No, yeah, no. Oh, oh, oh. No, that was useless. I think all we need to do to get over the ditch is have a second set of sensors which senses the ground, and when the ground drops off, then it can say, okay, uh, we're good to go. Now, I'm not going to use these cone sensors, because uh, I think they're I think they're too short range. Let's use these laser rangers instead. So all we really need to do is keep these splitters the way they are, and we're not going to change them, but we're going to remove these sensors from that. Uh, yeah, we're going to remove these sensors from that, just like this, and we're going to put an OR gate going into each of these splitters, right? Just like that. So we'll go left into this one and right into this one. And then all we're gonna do is have our two Ranger sensors, uh, left on the bottom, right on the top, uh, do the exact same thing that the OR gate does, except they're gonna check the condition. So we're gonna have uh, two functional gates. So greater than, greater than. So if the right ranger is greater than three and the left ranger is greater than, and we'll just put some static values here. So if it sees something on the front or one of these laser rangers becomes too much, it'll turn away from it. So that should work, I think. So let's fast forward again until we get to the, uh, we, we've all seen this a million times. We know it's going to work. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Are you serious? All right, perfect. So we made it through that. We're gonna go into this, dodge all this stuff, blah, 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 get out to the trees. All right, so hopefully when this sees the ditch, it'll turn away from the ditch and continue on its merry little way. 
All right, are we going to do it? Going straight out the ditch here. What? All right, so I've changed... I changed the tolerance to two meters, so if the ranger goes over two meters, it will, uh... It will trigger. I've also put an indicator here on the right side. We ran out of number indicators. You can't put more than four, apparently, so... I've got one on the right side here, so hopefully we can just monitor and see. But if it goes over two, it should activate. So let's see if it does that. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. There we go. Good. So follow that. Okay, perfect. No, that's good. It, it fixed itself. Okay. Now it's going to try and go for the GPS again. Are you serious? Just slightly not enough. So you know what we're going to do? That is an easy enough fix. We're just going to increase our timer from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. And we're literally going to time this, hopefully. I'm not really worried about the timer being 6 seconds on this initial section because, you know, we'll just it doesn't matter how wide we go really on these corners. So you see we can go there. It's going to go way out into the field now. Again, doesn't really matter. And then we'll get up into the trees again. It's going to see that and go way out into the field again. Again, doesn't really matter. Okay, here we go. Coming at the wall. It's going to rotate. Seize the wall. Seize the wall. Seize the wall. Come on. Okay, now rotate back. Okay, kind of. This might work. Probably going to see that again. Oh my god. Oh my, so close. This might be a trial and error thing now. I mean, I could adjust it and put more sensors around the sides and have it really hug that wall. But, uh... Or, or like, you know, fine-tune the sensor adjustment to really get it. Because right now the problem is there's nothing really... It's got a very wide angle on those two laser rangers, and they are just pinpoint sensors. So it's it's a little bit interesting, but we should get this here. See, the problem is right here now, this sensor doesn't actually see the cliff anymore. I'd have to put a sensor on the side that still can see the cliff. So it can't really tell when it's through. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Okay, that's all we needed. We're good. We're good. Five. Okay. Now the question is, how's it going to do this? It's going to go, like, straight at the wall. We need it to go right. It's not going to go right. Oh, boy. It's going to get, like, stuck in this corner. Or it's going to go all the way around the map. Actually, you know what? No, that's good, because now it's going to turn around... Aha, and now the left sensor is going to trigger it and it'll go all the way around this wall. That's perfect. It's perfect. A little bit stupid, but it's okay. Excellent. See, now it's going to follow the left wall. And this sensor, every time it sees that wall, the GPS is going to turn it towards it. And then the sensor is going to go, nope, I got to go away from it. No! You were the chosen one! You were right there! Why did you do it? Come back! Oh my god, okay. That's fine, it's fine. Guys, it'll it'll eventually figure it out. It'll eventually get there, I promise. It's gonna do it. Come on, buddy. Don't let me down now. Don't, 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 don't. You were so, don't. Alright, let's see, let's see if we can speed this up here. Come on, you can do it. Just make it around. Just, just. Make it around the wall. Just around. Just make it. Just. Just. Oh boy. Okay. You know what? We need to. We need to increase this to. You know. Let's just go. Let's just go crazy. Let's go ten seconds. The problem there is it was turning ever so slightly away from the wall. So it was just. It was at the very end there. It was getting away from its position. And rather than slowly veering back into the wall. The GPS goes into a tank drive, and then it turns back on an angle, and then falls to the wall again. Alright, okay, now, go into the corner, and then turn around and come out. Come on. Come on. No, no, turn, turn, turn. What are, are you serious? Are you actually serious right now? I said turn around and come out, not... Really? This is what we're doing? Are you gonna make it, or are you just gonna sit there and freak out? 
You're, gonna just, you're just gonna sit there and freak out? No, it does that pretty, pretty solid. Alright, come on, don't freak out in the corner this time. Okay, that's good. That's good. What we want. Now it's gonna come back this way, it's gonna see the wall, and then it's gonna drive straight. No. Oh, did it, it almost made it. It was so close. Never gonna make that though. <gasps> did it do it? Yes, yes. Oh my god, finally! It clipped that last little corner of the wall. Level complete, thank goodness. Parts used 21, gates used 24, a cost 1590. I'm a, I need to look up, I need to look up how people did this. We did make it, didn't make it in any sort of reasonable time, but we did in fact complete it in 5 minutes 17 seconds with $1590. I have no idea how you'd build this with 1200. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to check some of the workshop creations and see how someone did it in such a cheap way. If you guys do like this Logic Bot series, make sure you let me know and hit that thumbs up button down below. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, definitely gonna keep going and finish this section up pretty quick. I think the Assault Course and the House Clear are both remote control challenges. So it's relatively easy because you have direct control. I think the Mind Search is the last automatic challenge in this section. And then of course, two more sections to complete in this game and then all sorts of custom levels and everything else. So make sure you guys hit those buttons down below, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see y'all next time.